Today, I'm into the ride review of the Wahoo Kicker bike. In previous videos, I've covered the unboxing and building of the bike, fitting the bike up to my geometry and my sizing. We've configured the virtual gear sets and the virtual gearing. Today, it's all about what that ride feel is like. Is it like riding a bike? Like riding a spin bike? Does it pass the Llama Lab test? To quickly recap the technical specifications of the Wahoo Kicker bike, I'll throw them up here. We'll do a quick rundown if you haven't watched those other videos. This one's a bit of a standalone video. So the specifications of the unit reads pretty well. Power accuracy plus or minus 1% with no calibration required. It's jump on and ride, should be accurate. Max power of around 2200 watts, grade simulation plus 20%, negative 15%, but also tilt. So not only the Gradient is felt through the pedals. It's felt in the tilting simulation of the bike going up and down. The noise, it's virtually silent given it's belt driven. The group set functionality, well, you've got three or four to choose from there, depending on how you count them. We have Shimano, SRAM, Campagnolo, fully customizable and also additional buttons to use for additional features in the future. Gearing simulation can be almost whatever you like from one by to three by on the front with any number of combinations up the back. We have a gear status indicator with grade gearing connectivity. We have five different crank lengths to choose from. The adjustability and fit, well, it's all quick adjustability. I'll link below to my video, which covers the minimums and maximums of this bike for rider fit. The bike is easily customizable for your own saddle, bars, stem and pedals, and tri bars if you wish. I've had my own saddle on this bike since almost day one. Connectivity wise, as expected, we have Amp Plus, Amp Plus FEC and Bluetooth Smart. The data transmitted is speed, power, cadence and train and control. There's downhill drive simulation where if you're going down a negative gradient, that flywheel will continue to tick over and the unit also has brakes. So they're the technical specifications. I've put a few hundred kilometers and a few long hours on the Wahoo Kicker bike in the Llama Lab. So I think I'm in a pretty good position to tell you what my experience has been like. First up, cutting straight to the chase, it passes the Llama Lab test. So it's good news from the outset. The power numbers were brilliant up against the Asioma Duos. I'll do a deep dive into the power in a few minutes. One thing to note about the Kicker bike is that it's early in the life cycle of this unit. So the firmware is in rapid development or rapid production. What I have in the Llama Lab has been a production level firmware, but there are going to be a few additional features and I'll speculate on what they might be at the end of the video. Starting off with my ride overview here and cutting straight to the chase, it is a nice smooth ride feel. It's belt driven, connected to that weighted flywheel at the back. As you're turning the pedals over, it ticks over nicely. It's not a labored pedal stroke. You're not slogging through mud. It feels like you're riding a bike, which is what this unit is meant to do. I found erg mode to hold nice and steady in the gears that I choose. Sim mode is, again, as expected, hills are hills. The gear changing on the kicker bike under load is brilliant and a standout feature that I found after many hours riding the bike under all different circumstances. Now what I mean by gear changing under load is that on a geared bike with a chain and chain rings on the front, if you go from small ring to big ring, you can't do that under full load and vice versa. You can't go from big ring to small ring under full load. Even the cassette changes at the back, you can time those just right so you're not crunching gears. On the kicker bike, because it's virtual gearing, you can slam down whatever gears you want. You'll feel that pulse and you'll feel that jolt if you're going from, say, small ring to big ring, and you're not gonna skip a chain. It's not gonna fall off. You can really put down the watt bombs without any concern for throwing a chain. So training-wise, it is brilliant. Without that pulse coming through the drivetrain, you really don't know what gear you're in. And it's happened with other smart bikes where you might be on a simulated, say, Titans Grove on Zwift where there's a lot happening. You need to know you're changing through the gears and to distinguish that between a simulation gradient change. On the kicker bike, you can. You can flip through the gears. You feel that jolt. You know what a simulation change is. It's just as you'd expect. I'd go as far as saying this is the kind of ride feel you want on an outdoor bike. Now, bear with me because it might sound a little weird, but it's nice and smooth. There's almost unlimited gearing options and you can slam down through those gears under load without any worry in the world. If an outdoor bike could come out with this kind of gearing, I'm on board. Okay, enough talking here in the desk. Let's jump over to the Llama Lab and put this bike through its paces in person. Okay, some on the bike stuff now on the kicker bike, which will cover off a number of questions people have asked and put the bike through a number of tests that I've done with other smart bikes. So I've just completed a lap of Watopia Hilly, one of my favorite routes, the original route 
on Watopia, 9.2 kilometers. And you can see here, I've got the, uh, the green jersey, bit of the Zwift effect there. So this thing can hold its own in a sprint. What I'm gonna do here though, is go up Watopia wall. And after that first corner, simulate a hill attack, either bridging a gap or attacking a bunch that I'm on the front of, trying to get, get a gap away and in a race. I have seen something fail there in the past and it can trip up a few trainers with that gradient simulation and that simulated gearing that really needs to jump as I jump. We'll see how that goes. Past that, I'm gonna turn around, fly down the hill, big flywheel speed, big gear, wait for it to flatten out and open up a big sprint. I won't say massive sprint, as big as I can do. And what that will test is the stability of the unit. Can I trip up that flywheel again? Will it spin out on the flats? Can I slam down through the gears? And how it responds in that scenario. But first off, as I'm just ticking out here at 63 watts, I can show you the physical stability of the unit. I can't tip it sideways. It's extremely heavy and I can't go, definitely can't go forward. Back, maybe Sargon could probably mono this thing, but it's, it's very stable. The center of gravity is low and definitely towards the back, towards that fork that you just can't trip up on. So here we go, almost at the wall and you will see the tilt kick in as we hit the 6% gradient that it starts out with. So here we go. Let's throw a power up for good measure. So not only does it tilt, that sim mode kicks in, makes it harder to pedal. We're gonna go around this corner and throw in an attack. We have someone eight seconds up, seven seconds up the road, six seconds. There we go, target acquired. So steady state here. We'll throw in an attack at the sign to catch that rider. Grab a gear, and it's on. Another couple of gears. It's responded down to the gears. No worries. No problems at all. No spin outs. Power straight to the pedals. Whew. I'm toast. All right, tick box number one, done. <laughs> and Walt has just joined me. Sorry, Walt. <laughs> I threw it in an attack just then. Okay. Catch my breath. We'll turn around. We'll do this sprint test at the bottom of the hill. Brilliant response there from the unit. Okay. Again, into the virtual big ring on the front. You can feel that kick in. We'll wind it up. Max sprint in the bottom where it flattens out. It's around this corner. Let's see if you can rip this bike's head off. I think it's got me covered. At the sign, no, at the bridge. Let's make sure the gear's right. Here we go. Oh, no, nah, it's got me, it's got me covered. <laughs> Just like outside, I had to choose the right gear to start off. Probably a bit heavy. It kept heavy. <laughs> All right, check box number two, done. Flat road sprints at speed, not a prob. Let's throw in one more for good measure. Put it in the little ring. Easy spin. Sort of down a bit on the cassette at the back. We'll still a really short, high torque out of the saddle. Just jolted the system. Can we spin out? On the line. Go. <laughs> nope. That responds. 
like a bicycle. Could not trip it up. Okay, done deal. And I'm cooked after about 800 meters of riding. So there's the on bike experience. Hill attacks, no problems. Sim mode up and down, no problems. Slamming down through the gears, because you can slam down through them or up them. You can feel that jolt through the uh, drivetrain as you change. Really obvious what's a gear change and what's a sim change. And uh, I need to catch my breath. Okay, a few minutes later and a few sips of this drink later and I have my breath back. What we'll look at now is leg rub or thigh gap or top tube distance. So let me introduce you to downstairs here to talk about my experience with this fatted top tube. So my experience with the top tube size is about 50-50. And what I mean by that is, hang on, let me get a flat route so I don't have to go back up that hill, is that if I'm pushing hard on the pedals, 150 watts, 200 watts, etc. My legs are straight up and down and they don't touch the top tube at all. If I'm just cruising like now, my legs are a bit sloppy side to side, I will brush right at six o'clock. Now it's not, well, not really brush. It's just, it just touches. It just, if it was a true brush, every pedal stroke, this would be a showstopper. Um, it may be a showstopper for some, depending on your bike fit, your leg uh, circumference and your hip width, and I guess your human Q factor. Uh, but for me, it's there, but not an issue because after a few hundred kilometers on this bike, it's only there like right now as I'm talking to you and I'm not straight up and down in the pedals. So I'll bring the camera in a little closer so you can see what I mean. So here's the section just here on the top tube where my legs will touch. So as I'm pedaling and pushing down the watts, my legs aren't touching. But if I'm just cruising and I'm lazy on the pedals, I've got a bit of brush just here. But again, normal riding, no touch, lazy, and I'm just touching at six o'clock on each pedal stroke, but it's not wearing inside my legs. But this could be, this is definitely something people will need to look at and evaluate based on their bike fit before purchasing one of these bikes. My take on the tilting motion of the bike is that it feels more natural than a kicker climb. The kicker climb itself pivots from the back of the bike and tilts up and down. The kicker bike is from the center and tilts like that. A subtle difference, but it feels more natural when climbing and descending hills. Now, is the tilt motion or a kicker climb a must have for training? No, absolutely not. But neither is sim mode or erg mode or our interactive trainers. They just add to the experience indoors to make it more immersive and make us forget the fact that we are really indoors going absolutely nowhere. And just like the kicker climb, the tilt on the kicker bike is optional. You can press the button to lock it out. One thing I will mention about the noise or the sound coming from this unit is it's not completely silent. There's a humming motion or some sort of harmonic resonance to the unit at certain flywheel speeds or cadences. Now, it's not a showstopper. If you've got your fans on and music on, it'll be louder than this. But if you were to turn all those off and put your ear to it, or use a shotgun mic, which I have in this video, which puts the microphone straight at the unit, you will hear it. And you'll hear it when you change down through gears. That's definitely offset by the fact that you are not slamming down through gears and making loud crunching noises. So it's not a dead silent unit. It's just very, very quiet. We'll have to do some head-to-head -head comparisons to show you what that's all about, but they are very difficult to do. So a new addition to the Llama Lab test is, does it pass the sleeping baby test? We're good. And the one standout feature is that when you slam down through the gears, unlike a direct drive trainer or a wheel on trainer, there's no noise. They're not slamming down through the gears, you're not grinding things up and down, and there's no freewheel noise. So a lot of the trainers that we have, the direct drive trainers, the Kicker, the Neo, the Hammer H3, the anything else I've forgotten, the Drivo, they make a ratcheting noise when you're freewheeling, and when you're slamming down through the gears, they're very, very loud. You've got to do quiet gear changes. With the Kicker bike being a smart bike, belt driven, it's quiet. You slam down through the gears, you feel that pulse, you feel it in the pedals, you're not hearing it though. So there's a win there for the noise levels. I'll take a guess, the fans in your training room will be louder than the kicker bike. If not, your music should definitely be up louder than the kicker bike. This is me talking on camera one, me talking on camera two, just as a 
reference. In the near future, I'll look at doing some head-to-head -head comparisons in the same environment, but again, you've got to line everything up just perfectly under the same conditions, and it's only applicable noise levels to that room, but it might give you a slight indication about what they sound like. Okay, onto one of my favorite parts, and that's the data coming out of this unit. We're gonna deep dive into that and have a look at what it's all about over on my favorite website on the internet, DC Unit Makers Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple FIT files as an overlay and see what lines up. A few things first, though. In sim mode, the data is a little jagged. We'll go into that in a moment. Uh, and in erg mode, power smoothing is enabled by default. What this means at this version of the firmware that I'm on, when you give it a set point for erg mode, such as 200 watts or 250 watts, that's what the unit reports back as it doing. It gives a bit of fake watts, but it's very, very close. But just be aware it will flatline in erg at this point in time. On the Kicker Direct Drive trainers, it's a toggle option to turn on or off. And we're putting the pressure on Wahoo to do the same with the Kicker bike very soon. And secondly, the version of the firmware on the Kicker bike that I have is only Amp Plus FEC and Bluetooth Smart. There's no traditional standard Amp Plus to read power on another unit. I've got to read Amp Plus FEC with the unit that's controlling it. So at this point in time, that was Zwift in the Llama Lab. Jumping over here to the data and the standard Llama Lab test that has been enhanced. I'll get to that in a second. So 10 minute warm up, a few sprints to bed everything in with the Asioma Duos, not the dupes that I have, Asioma Duos. Steady state here, 10 minutes at 200 watts, 10 minutes at 250, into some sprints, and I'll scroll and select just that. Bang, there we go. So 225 versus 225. Did I tell you the power was pretty good? So you see the kicker bike there flatlining because erg smoothing is on and enabled by default. The line there in purple is the Asioma Duos. And of course, you're going to get a little up and down because humans are meat motors. We are not perfect. And we just go up and down a little bit. But look at those numbers. I'm pretty happy with those. And the transitions from 200 to 250, boom, no problems at all. Into the sprints. And you can see the data there is a little jagged, which is what I said before from the kicker bike. A little delayed there by about a second or so, but definitely flatlining. Just feels a little bit like erg mode power smoothing. That's definitely a sim section just here. But again, numbers look pretty good overall. Um, into some just riding along, just riding along. Matching up, not too bad, but you can see the blue is again a little digital. Not a big one, just a little digital. Uh, 159, 161, psh, no problems at all. Into the overs and unders, uh, 350 watts, 450 watts over and unders. Again, you get digital from the kicker bike and the Asiomas are looking pretty good. Again, erg mode is always when it changes resistance, it goes up above, kicks down, tries to stabilize, and it's about how smooth I am on the pedals. I did an okay job there, not too bad. Jumping into a new section of the Llama Lab test. Now this tests power accuracy versus flywheel speed. It's four and a half minutes long, and every minute and a half, I choose three different gearing. The easiest gear on the bike, mid-range gear and the hardest gear on the bike. So for example, 39.25 and then somewhere in the middle and then 53.11. So slow flywheel, medium flywheel speed, large flywheel speed or high speed flywheel. And that set point is at 225 watts and I aim for around 90 RPM, 90 to 93 RPM. So what I'm doing there is testing the power accuracy across a range of working zones of the flywheel speed on the bike. It gets a bit complex, but what it indicates though is that, well, a lot of direct drive trains really fall apart at the fast end of flywheel speeds. The kicker bike holds up pretty well. So what we're looking at, again, it's flatlined because that erg mode is reporting erg smooth, which is a flat set point. Um, the easiest gear, spinning along, spinning along, good road feel, still on the bike, that's the easiest gear. Mid-range, mid-virtual cassette still holds pretty well. And then when I put it in the virtual 5311, you can see the power on the pedals. I'm oof, having to oof that over and really ramp that up. And then things stabilize. It's not too bad, but there are, it has different characteristics. It does change a little bit, but the accuracy is not too bad. So selecting that there, what have we got? 225 versus 224. Again, the scaling is a bit different, so it's a bit jumpy, but it does pretty well with different flywheel speeds in erg mode too. And then finally, some just sim mode riding along. 127, 131, all looking good. Data set number two, the Aussie Hump Day ride on Zwift. Again, this is all just sim mode. Uh, easy rides for the first 45 minutes into a harder lap. I'm not even gonna bother about the first half because it all looks pretty good. It's within one watt there overall. Overall, sometimes it's a little different because of the start stops and there's no auto pause indoors, but we'll just dive into this 
effectively race section here. Um, 327, 330 with a few little ups and downs. Um, done, passed, no worries, nothing more to talk about here. It works for power. Happy, happy days. Uh, scrolling down, I guess we'll look at cadence. There we go, 73 RPM versus 72 RPM with a lot of ups and downs and some coasting. So that's all good there for cadence as well. So no problems at all with the data coming out of this unit. That is such a relief. Onto the summary section of this video. Now, if the kicker bike was the only unit you were to tell me that I could ride indoors from here on in, I'd be okay with that. The thing just works. The ride feel is good in sim and in erg mode. It holds up well in a sprint on hills and flat accelerations on flat ground. The power data is great and it's quiet. And for once, I'm nearing the end of a video and I'm not sitting here going, I hope it's fixed in firmware soon. This thing just works out of the box, which is not what's happened with most of the hardware I've looked at in 2019. So look, there's a lot of frustration pent up there, but this thing does just work. And pff, anyway, next section here. Having said all that, it's not all happy day. So let's speculate how this could be made better. Erg mode power smoothing needs to be optional. I don't like it. I can't get proper data out of it. Even though the ASIOM has agreed with it, I'd still like my proper graph of what I'm really doing. Uh, TT bars and options for gear changes out the front, that would be handy. DI2 synchro would be nice. I run that outside, so I believe that's coming in the near future as well. Integration with training platforms as they update. It's not very well supported at the moment. Those additional buttons could be used for steering, FTP bias up and down, skip interval, you name it. There's a lot of things coming for this that just aren't there just yet. Again, it's still early days, but I'd like to see that integrated a lot better. The flywheel, I believe, has a lot of unlocked potential. There's no reasons other than possible patents that they couldn't do ride feel, just like the Neo, on the kicker bike. Or maybe some really interesting things that could be modeled in based on the software that we use. If we're riding a virtual mountain bike, mountain bike tires have different characteristics than road bike tires. That could really slow that flywheel down, make things feel a little sluggish for that particular training that we wanna do. But look, all this relies on having good integration between hardware vendors and the software vendors. So fingers crossed the industry can hold hands and give us, the consumer, a good experience with these higher priced devices than we've seen in the past. Look, speaking of, the next video I'll look at uh, how it all integrates with different software platforms and what those buttons do now and may do in the near future. So stay tuned for that one. So there we have it, my take on the Wahoo Kicker bike. It has impressed me. It did live up to expectations, which I can't say for a lot of things in 2019. So it was, again, it was a breath of fresh air jumping on this bike and having that great experience. Is that great experience worth you going out and purchasing one? Well, that's entirely your call. Wahoo are known for having their in-store ride experience demo stations. So I highly recommend throwing a leg over yourself, testing it out, seeing if it's for you and going from there. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. It's been a long one, but hopefully it's been informative. If so, hit that like button, hit subscribe to support this channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Oh, and just so you know, there's only one way to mount a Wahoo Kicker bike, and that is to Mount from the rear and let the bike do the hard work. Right on.